I'm Catherine Diorio. This week on Check Please, public health educator Felicia Fredericks says if you're looking for a feel-good Southside selection with fabulous food, you can't go wrong at her sensational Senegalese spot. But architect Jordan Hicks says if you want a perfectly constructed brunch surrounded by lots of Logan Square action, you gotta hang out with him at his favorite diner. <laughs> Up first, private chef Dave Bridges loves restaurants that combine contemporary cooking with its culture's historical roots. And he says he knows a place that delivers that every night. Just follow him to Fulton Market and meet him at Momotaro. Our thing is that we like to bring in an incredible array of fish, varietals, and species. Species that we want to learn about if we don't know about them, um, but we want our guests to also learn about those species. And so we bring in a lot of interesting stuff from Japan, and we have a large Japanese following as well. Especially with the sushi program, our chef Shigei-san, who uh, runs the sushi program, and he does a special job over there, and the flavors are extremely Japanese. Downstairs in the music is kind of like 50s and 60s classics Japanese. We do some cafeteria style trays, which is a lot of fun. In the kitchen here, the robata, you know. When I think izakaya, I think robata, so we had to have a robata. So we cook over binchotan, lots of skewers. There's a lot of action on the tables from different sized Japanese grills to simmering dishes, sizzling dishes, stuff like that. So I think it's like kind of entertaining as well when you eat here. And instead of everything being on a plate, you have different elevations on a tabletop. So it keeps people, whether they realize they're not subconsciously, sort of entertained. So Dave, you say Momotaro is marvelous. Why'd you choose it? I'd say Momotaro is more than marvelous. <laughs> uh, you know, I chose it because I've been all over the country uh, eating at the, the most lauded sushi restaurants there is. And Momotaro is definitely better than some that I've been to that I've even spent, you know, tremendous amount of money on to go for, you know, to That's celebrate my birthdays and that sort of thing. Just the creativity level on things that I've never experienced before is through the roof. Mm -hmm. the, the menu has no weak points. You know, I can look through every section of the menu and be dying over quite a few items that a uh, younger Dave would just order them all and eat them all, but <laughs> Dave with two kids, you know, I, I can't yeah, do that. So Somebody yeah. got to go to school, yeah, you know. Right. But, so, uh, you know, I, I love Montar for the creativity, so it, it becomes for me both uh, a learning experience, mm -hmm. so both it, it's both personal and professional. Is it just the food? Oh no, the service is unbelievable. It doesn't matter what server or even the busboy walking by, if I stop them and say I want something or need something or I have a question about the menu or anything, they all have the answer. All right, Felicia, <laughs> was this your experience? Yes. Right. The busboy is not even like your average busboy. Do you understand? Yeah. Very knowledgeable, very helpful. So much so that I gave the busboy a tip because... Wow! No, wow. seriously, he was that good. Cool! Yeah, and then... A nice Japanese lady came by and said she was just happy to see us there. And I took children. Mm -hmm. So she was happy oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. they were expanding, how she said, it, expanding their palates at an early age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed my Momotaro experience. Jordan, you went with your wife on a date, and she's a vegetarian. She's a vegetarian, yeah. Right. So oh, a, lot, yeah. a lot of times, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm an avowed carnivore and will eat any part of any animal. <laughs> Me too. Uh, and so, so going out is, is, is fun for us together, um, you know, just to, like try different, different sides of, of a place. And they were very accommodating in that way. They had a, a vegetarian menu, which I, you know, I've usually just gone to kind of the neighborhood sushi type of Japanese place, where that's not, there aren't always a lot of options. And Their she had a- signature dish is vegetarian. The momotaro yeah. tartar. tartar is the- The, the tomato, tomato yeah, yeah, which was, yeah. that was great. It was almost more like a like a condiment, and uh, I did the beef tartare as well, which was great. And there were these small mushrooms in it; and it was so delicate. So it was nice that we could both have a tartare at the same time, which is not not an experience that, that, that we get a lot. Um, had the unagi rice that was delicious, and kind of like you know a little bit of sweetness in the barbecue, which mm -hmm. was which was really great. Um, and then I had sashimi uh, tuna belly that was so good. Yeah. Did you have the chutoro or the otoro? I do the otoro. Yeah, yeah, me too. The texture was so good. Yeah. All the food was prepared so thoughtfully. Yeah. yeah. You know, I really, really appreciated that. And, you know, I love the neighborhood Japanese places we go to, too, but this was uh -huh. a, like a different yeah. level. And, and they do get fish in. I mean, they do source things locally, but they also do get fish in from oh, yeah, the Skiji fish market yeah. and in Tokyo. 
Well, tell us what you got Felicia to eat. Uh, we started with the miso soup. Um, we instantly noticed the cute baby mushrooms in there. <laughs> yeah. They're a whole in its entirety, but they were so little. And with little kids, when oh, they see right. other things that are little, they think that's like really them. cool. Right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Size for me. Yeah, exactly. Then we had the nagima, which was the chicken thighs on a skewer. And then we had the shahan, which is the beef fried rice. Delicious. They brought out the soy sauce, you know, which we didn't need. It, it's one of those things like, oh, no, don't insult the dish <laughs> by pouring <laughs> stuff on it. Um, we also had um, the tekamaki, mm -hmm. which is the bluefin tuna roll. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And when you go in there, it's so hip. It's so cool. And, you know, you really don't get that vibe when, when you think Japanese and, you know, you think, oh, the seriousness and, yeah, you know. Precision. Oh, yeah, and all of uptight that. Uptight and tradition. Exactly. Yeah. All those things that we tend to associate with that. Yeah. And it's like, no. Well, and it's definitely a different style. There's multiple kind of spaces within this building. I mean, it's 11,000 square feet, yeah. this restaurant. And it's tough really to describe because it's not like the upstairs is stuffy. No. You know, and it's no. in no way it's stuffy. Just it's different. just the, yeah, it's just flat out different. It's like mm -hmm. another level of cool. So a restaurant like this, let's talk about the price point. Jordan, why don't you tell us what you thought? You know, it was a little more expensive than I would usually go to. It's more like a special occasion kind of mm -hmm. place. It was well worth it because the food was, was uh, so amazing. You know, such a so great So it was quality. a value for what you were getting. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, the kinda, it's the kind of place that, um, you know, I wouldn't on a, on a normal Tuesday night just step out and think, oh, I'm going to go to Momotaro. But for, you know, for someone like me, it's, it's, it's a, it's a re it was a real special occasion, a real, a real treat to be there. Well, Dave, you chose Momotaro. Sum it up for us. Momotaro is a place where you want to score with a hot chick, then you're really not that cool enough to do it on your own. All right. <laughs> uh, and Felicia? Uh, Momotaro, Japanese or sushi elevated. Great. And Jordan? Innovative Japanese food for a special occasion. You can try the sushi for yourself at Momotaro, 820 West Lake Street, 312-733-4818. Open for dinner every day, reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is $80. Felicia Fredericks knows the continent of Africa offers a wide array of cuisines, but she says the blended flavors of Senegalese cooking tops them all. She says for a dose of dibi, fataya, and much more, get yourself to Kenwood and check out Gori. Yeah, Senegalese cuisine is uh, about all love, and it's marinated, cooked for love. Everything here is cooked fresh. We don't cook and sit it. We cook it when you order. We go in and make it for you. It takes like about 15 to 20 minutes, but it's all worth it. I have my people that work here. They work really hard to make sure the food is prepared right and it's done correctly. And once people will try it out, we want them to be happy and tell some other people, friends and families that to come by. It's feel great. It was a struggle from the beginning, but then we keep on going and keep on going, and then the community is helping, everybody's supporting. They love it. Like, we have people making all kind of comments. They like, they, some of them say they never have something like that before. They like the flavor, they like the cooking, they like, they can see the love inside the cooking. They can see all of that, and they're excited. And that's what we want to see. That's what it's about. Felicia, you say Gori cuisine should not be missed. Why'd you choose it? Because it's like an oasis in the middle of Kenwood. Kenwood is going this transformation right now. A lot of things are happening, especially since President Obama, well, former President Obama came out of that Kenwood area. And 
Gore is one of those few restaurants where you can actually sit down mm -hmm. and enjoy a meal. So that's not service. fast casual. Not fast casual. It's actually not fast at all. <laughs> 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 not at all. <laughs> it's not. They have to like prepare this food. It's a breath of fresh air where you can have some ethnic cuisine, sit down, have a conversation, go on a date, that kind of, and not feel guilty about what you ate. So a lot of people aren't familiar with uh, the food of Senegal. What would people look at at uh, Gori? Senegal was colonized by the French. Mm -hmm. So y there is a bit of French infusion in their food. Okay. A lot of fish, mm -hmm. lamb, chicken, not really beef. They're not, I didn't, mm -hmm. not really big on beef, but lamb as the red meat. It was awesome. Like, uh, like before going to the place, you know, I'm like looking on Facebook and then I'm like, and I see a picture of the whole fish yeah. and the onions and everything across the top. And I'm just like drooling. <laughs> oh my God, I'm getting that. <laughs> and so when we, when we go there, you know, I, it's just like everywhere, you know, I fall back on the experience of the people that know. And so I fell back on the waiter and I said, I said, dude, you know, I want, I want the fish. I want a fish. And I, and I preferably want the whole one where I could eat the fins and all the other glorious things. And uh, my wife was interested Definitely in chicken. And so we ordered two things that were fairly similar. And he said, no, no, you're going to get whatever and you're going to get whatever. That way you both get this great yes. mix of flavors nice. to see more of what's going on. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I loved the fish. Uh, I, I just loved it all across the board. I loved everything I, I ate there for sure. I had I had the fish as well. Um, oh, cool. And you know, it's funny. Onions are the, are the one thing in the world that I don't usually eat. But like, I didn't even know it was onions when I started. <laughs> like, these are these are these are pretty good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the, the the blend of seasonings on the fish was was incredible. Yeah. That, that was that was great. Um, you know, one thing that kind of uh, surprised me a little bit. There's a, a hibiscus juice and a, and a ginger juice, and both of those are so complex in their flavors. Yeah, you know? they're you really, could really great. Really get the floral yeah. notes of the bisop. Was that the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 You could really get the floral notes and the fruitiness from that. Let's Let's talk about the service there. Service was great. It's not the, like when you said, oh, is it fast casual? Oh, no, girl, you know, <laughs> it's not fast in any sort of way. But in defense of them, everything was extremely fresh and it was definitely made to order. Like nothing, was, there was no sort of like prep as, or mise en place, as, as the fancy people would say. It was all delicious and you know, uh, I did. I wasn't sitting there like, "Where's my food?" Oh, I'm yeah, getting agitated right? with talking to my kids or anything. <laughs> we had a good time. The windows were open, yeah. and my wife even commented, "This is like we're on one of those vacations in another That's country, Dave." I said, okay. I said "You know, like just the open air broad. breeze and the smell of the spices." Yeah, we were just relaxed. On TV. We were yeah. completely yeah. relaxed. That's so cool. That's what they should do. They should start bottling those spices and put them <laughs> in that that thing that fumes in your house oh, like and relax everybody. Oh my God. Such an air wick of <laughs> yes, seasoning. <laughs> but it, like you said, this feeling of kind of like you're not in Chicago anymore. Oh well, yeah. They've got the clothing store. Correct. Uh, which which we, we just kind of we just kind of peeked in. It was uh, kind of a Saturday evening when we were there, so I don't know if the, the shop was still open. But the uh, bold colors on the fabrics mm -hmm. and yeah. great prints, and that was that was a, a cool thing to see. Right. Yeah, well, they didn't have my the, size. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the owner of the restaurant, Adama Bak, he actually came here from the island of Gori, yes. which is an island in Senegal, and his family has a restaurant. But he came here as a designer, which is why he, there's a shop, which is his next door. Oh, but he wanted okay. to bring the food of his family and the family restaurant to Ooh, Kenwood. Nice. So that yeah. is how the restaurant opened. I was, so that's I was like there. instantly on the, like when you were talking about there being, you know, there's lamb and there's fish. I'm like, what country has both? That right. that's not the size of America. And so yeah, I was right. instantly on my phone, like where exactly is Senegal in Africa, yeah. and yeah, and it had the coast, and it had the whole bit, yeah. and then it, the, the French influence just became immediately apparent of why it was there, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right, this is awesome. How did, how did your wife do with the, did she go? And she, oh yeah, she came, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we went with a couple of friends as well, and it was great because the, the server was, was really helpful because she said, you know, I'm a vegetarian, what, what would you recommend? And she was gonna do a number of the sides initially, and he recommended, um, oh no, you have to try this particular curry, which, uh, which, you know, which she enjoyed. And so there was that kind of attention, you know, to the experience, and he wanted to kind of showcase like the, his favorite dishes and, and, nice. and the best dishes. So yeah, she had a really good time, and she had some of my side, which I did the, um, the cabbage and carrots with the caraway, I think it okay. was. That was, that was really tasty. That's well, Felicia, cool. you chose Gori Cuisine. Sum it up for us. A taste of West Africa on the south side. Great. And Dave? 
I would say uh, Gori is a place you want to go to when you want to try something you've never had before and you want to get out of uh, Chicago by leaving the world but without actually leaving Chicago. Yeah. Cool. And Jordan? Uh, bold flavors, friendly service, and uh, you got to try the juices. You can sample Senegal for yourself at Gori Cuisine, 1126 East 47th Street, 773-855-8120. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is 20 bucks. Hicks is no stranger to all the brunch spots around town, but he says that old school is the best school. He says for delicious diner fare, make your way to Logan Square and stop in at Johnny's Grill. Cheeseburger, no pickle? What? Quarter <laughs> I think they should expect kind of typical American diner fare meets uh, a little bit of Irish. <laughs> I kind of want people to enjoy the food that I enjoyed when I was younger. <laughs> we have an Irish breakfast, we do fish and chips, and we do Irish bacon baps. I love being able to talk to the people that I get to cook for. You know, I can be having a conversation with you while I'm cooking your breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, it's very informal, very personal experience. Like, you, we see the same faces, so we know their names, we know what they like to eat already. And if we don't know your name, we probably call you by what you eat. <laughs> we like six egg whites scrambled, two sides of bacon is here. I love that! But we're not pretentious, we don't take ourselves too serious. Our job is to feed you and you know, hope that you leave as happy as you came in. So Jordan, you say Johnny's Grill stands out. Why'd you choose it? Well, you know, it's, it's a neighborhood with an abundance of brunch options, al almost too many sometimes, you know. Um, and my wife and I have lived in Logan Square for, uh, for about four years now. You know, I love that it's a, it's a place that's, um, you know, it's, it's casual and, you know, we often um, could, could go on a, on a Saturday or Sunday morning and not have a long wait like you mm -hmm. would at Lula Next Door, which is, which is also really great. Um, but, you know, that it's, it's, it feels really like a neighborhood place. And then the food is, um, you know, is interesting. There's always some kind of, you know, a little bit of a twist on a lot of that diner fare. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's sometimes there's like a, an Irish inflection to some of it, which, which I enjoyed a lot. Mm -hmm. There's this Irish breakfast with the, uh, with the back bacon and the, the black pudding, which I, which I like a lot. Um, I've had the, the salmon Benedict mm -hmm. um, is really good. Um, the biscuits and gravy are, 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 are great. There's just, the, there's something just kind of extra savory about the, about the, the sausage gravy that they're, they're working with. Uh, the Johnny cakes are great. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's one of the dishes that it comes out with a bigger portion than, than, you, than you might expect. Um, I've had that with, uh, with, with friends there before. And then mm -hmm. the location is great. You're right on the square and sitting outside, especially, you know, in the uh, spring, summer, fall is, is really wonderful. Uh, great people watching, great dog watching, uh, mm -hmm. going, going back and forth to the square. It's not just a brunch place though, right? Right, right. They also do, um, they are open uh, for uh, in, into the evening and, and a, we've been there a few times for, you know, for burgers later in the afternoon. That's a lot of fun too. And the so tofu banh mi, uh, my wife oh, really likes. Oh, yeah. Nice, yeah. Cool. perfect. So something vegetarian yep. friendly oh, at a yeah. diner. At a diner. Yeah. 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 Again, yeah. that's yeah. something you might Nobody expect. Wants it's tofu yeah. banh mi at a diner. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's what I mean, that's like really cool. the whole twist there. You know, Johnny's is funny because the things I think when you pull up to it, you're not, you're expecting when you hear it's Sarah Jordan's restaurant, you're expecting something different, then you pull up to it and it's kind of just looks like it's been in the neighborhood forever. Because it has. Mm -hmm. It's literally <laughs> was there for over 30 years before oh, wow. she took it over. Okay. And because it was such a beloved staple of the neighborhood, she left the sign as kind of an homage to the original Johnny's Grill. And probably some of the food. Well, Felicia, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. 
it's just kind of one of those laid back, let your hair down without all the frills. Mm -hmm. Great burgers right off the grill. And the fish. The fish was great, mm -hmm. which is really ex unexpected for a diner. It's like you don't expect, oh, well, we have a catch of the day, and our catch of the day is soul. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the, it was so light and crispy and just beautifully done. And their fish sandwich was like, had um, coast, like a slaw instead of lettuce. Really good. And then, um, also, just the whole ambiance. You can hear the music playing. And you know with Logan Square, you have that vibe, that Logan Square vibe of artsy and people who are just finding their way in life. It's kind of like off-Broadway kind of feel. Um, really cool skateboarders. You can see there's a little skateboard park not too far down on Logan Square. There were artists posted up just painting live, feeling the groove. There was a live jazz band playing on the square that evening. And that whole vibe, that whole feel was just really good. The Logan Square itself, I, I, I had never really been there before. And I was surprised, like you said, Lula's is next door. I'd heard yeah. a million things about that. Uh, and so I was like, oh, okay, this is what Logan Square is. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, uh, yeah, everything I got was good. I got the sandwich, the the bap, the Irish. Oh, that's so twist. good. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I definitely loved it. If I went back, I would do it again for sure. Mm -hmm. The the French fries were fresh cut, uh, and I'm a French fry freak. And so yeah, they they have hot sauce, you know, which for me is a must. And a lot of places don't have it. Oh, and then that Sorry. carrot habanero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One. Real tasty. I'm always yeah. getting yeah. the hottest. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I'm sitting next to the pastry cabinet, they have the pop tarts and the donuts and these little pies. But it's there. like a pina and a, colada pop tart. Oh yeah, and so yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So I was like, I'll take the pop tart myself. <laughs> and so the guy heated it up and brought it to me and the flavor of the, the pina colada pop tart indeed was great. Uh, I, I was disappointed in the texture of the dough. It had been overworked, you know, oh, it was, yeah. it was oh, fairly right. tough. Yeah. Because it is diner food, elevated or not, it is diner food. Um, what, did you, what did you think of the prices? It was all right. For a diner, it's kind of steep. But for like, if you want to get a burger, kids menu, those prices were kind of fair. Just they were in fair. In line with the neighborhood. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Jordan, you chose Johnny's Grill. Sum it up for us. Um, it's a, a great brunch spot with uh, Irish inflection. It's just a, it's a such a relaxing weekend experience. We, we really love it there. Dave. Johnny's Grill is a place you would uh, be more than happy to bring your family. Uh, have no worries whatsoever. So Alicia? Um, tasty food off the grill without all the frills. So on this week's show, we featured Momotaro in the West Loop, Gori Cuisine in Kenwood, and Johnny's Grill in Logan Square. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we took you to Lake Street and tried out Momotaro. Dave recommends it and says it's some of the best Japanese cuisine he's ever had. Felicia thoroughly enjoyed her experience and thought the service was impeccable. Jordan said everything he ate was prepared thoughtfully and he loved every bite. Then we flew down to 47th Street and checked out Gori Cuisine. Felicia recommends it for a relaxing meal with authentic Senegalese cuisine. Dave was delighted with the mix of new, complex flavors and said he felt like he was on a vacation. Jordan appreciated the friendly waitstaff and their wonderful recommendations. <music> Lastly, we brought you to Kedzie and tested out Johnny's Grill. Jordan recommends it and says it's a great neighborhood brunch spot. Felicia adored the vibe of the restaurant and neighborhood. Dave thought everything he ate was solid and liked checking out Logan Square. We've had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank my guests, Dave Bridges, Felicia Fredericks, and Jordan Hicks. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Catherine Diorio, and I'll see you then. Cheers, guys. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Plays, go to wttw.com slash checkplays.